Jeff, Karen, Kat, are you ready for this one? U-C-R. Go. We say it what we want, give it to you non-stop. When it plays any time, not afraid to speak our mind. That's just the way we roll, we never gonna go. On top of the original, on Central Radio. Hello. And welcome to Uncensored Radio. We have an amazing, controversial show for you tonight. It is just me and Jeffrey. You see, I try to put extras on it. Like, it's so dramatic, controversial. But it's going to be a fun show, actually, because you know me. I'm a fun-loving personality. Nothing is ever going to get me down. And I finally want to clear the air on a lot of things. But before we get to that, Jeffrey Emmett, how are you, my love? I am fantastic. I'm kind of excited we're finally going to, like, really address this. Uh, I was, what's messed up is during the same time, like, I was just thinking to myself, like, oh, this is going to be a controversial hour. Drama film, and then you said it. I was like, God, great minds really do think alike. Right, 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 exactly. Oh, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's it's so, I mean, I can't even get on Facebook nowadays and, like, not read all of these Posts and all of these comments and all of these speculations and all of this, all this stuff, you know. And so for me, it's like enough's enough. I'm going to say what I have to say. I thought I already did that, though. Like a couple weeks ago, I kind of just said what I had to say, and I was kind of done with it. Um, I know you were. Uh, Yeah. It gets meaner and meaner and meaner. I mean, it's just, it's what we're talking about, if you're just tuning in, I'm Karen Ashley. I used to be on a show called Power Rangers, woohoo, and it was a great experience. And as of lately, there is there was an offer put on the table for a, a lot of people to come back to, you know, basically, I guess, do a cameo on the show. It really wasn't even a guest starring role. It really wasn't, at least it was never presented to me as anything more than just a cameo. And my first thought, Oh, well, wait, you should tell, explain them what a cameo is, because I'm sure there's some of these kids that do not understand. Okay. A cameo, a cameo is where is. you say no lines, you say nothing, and the camera just kind of shows your face or kind of just shows you for, you know, a few, a few minutes or not even a few minutes, maybe a few seconds. Um, from what I understood, there were so many people asked back. I think it was every single, almost every single series. I do believe there were some people they didn't reach out to, but I think it was because they couldn't find them or, you know, uh, Savon, well, I wouldn't say Savon, but the production company isn't always very good at trying to hunt people down. If, if they want you, they'll just skip over you. Um, so I think a lot of people who didn't get in touch, they didn't get in touch with us just because they couldn't find them. But long story short, they asked us to come back. They put an offer on the table. Um, and this is where the plot thickens. It gets a little sticky. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, my first thought, my very first thought was, this is what the reunion is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a cameo. Like, I always thought, I always had high hopes. Because people ask me this. You know, Jeffrey, and I know all the audience knows. Every time I go to a convention, I get asked at least 50 times, would you ever do Power Rangers again? Would you ever do Power Rangers again? Would you ever do a reunion show? Would you guys, like, we always, I mean, that is the hot ticket item. That is the question of the day. And I always thought at some point they would come a call in. But I really thought when they came a call in, that it would be um, something special. Like, I really thought there would be an episode, there would be a storyline, there would be something, because the reality is, is, I mean, to get the original cast, at least this is my opinion, I think it's a very special moment. I think it's a very special moment. If you can get the original cast back together in the same room, on the same TV screen, I thought the, the moment needed to be special. So when I noticed that it was going to be a cameo, it was just kind of like, I don't know about this one. And I'm not going to say what any of my other compadres felt, but the feeling was kind of mutual because we talked about it. We got on a phone, we got on a text message, we got on an email, and we all kind of started discussing the options. Um, And we kind of just got a blanket email. It wasn't anything, hello, Karen, hello, you know, David, Steve, Johnny, Kat, Jason. It was nothing personal. It was like, hello, Rangers. So it was a a mass email 
or mask, you know, it wasn't anything personal. Um, so that was another off-putting kind of situation because it's like, look, we've worked for you guys. We've helped you guys build this franchise. I mean, you can say, you know, you own it, but at the end of the day, if it wasn't for the actors, I don't know how how well it would have gone. I don't think if people wouldn't have identified with us and people wouldn't have enjoyed our acting performances, <laughs> whether they were good, bad, or whatever, the reality well, was the actors, in my opinion, brought the show to life. And be Kevin. honest. Because once they started switching the whole cast, the show went downhill. People right. stopped watching. Right. I agree. And I think it was because they switched to a different format. When I was on the show, they were very they were very into the audience identifying with the characters. They wanted everyone to have somebody. Each color represented a different kid, a different situation, you know? And I think when, you know, the politics and the money and, you know, Saban has always been known to be a cheap company. We're not going to sugarcoat the situation. We're not going to sit here and pretend like they were God's gift to opportunity. They gave us an opportunity, but they didn't really pay us for it. And at that time in my life, and I think in most of the lives, we were all starting out in the acting business. So even though we weren't getting the money we deserved, it was a great opportunity for us to start our careers. It was a great opportunity. But that was 20 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever it was. Whenever you got on the show, whenever person got started, that was then. So skip to today where I haven't been on the show in forever. I make a great living. I have a great life. I, you know, travel. I get to go to conventions. I get to meet fans all the time. Um, I've got an amazing radio show. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I've got, you know, a pilot show that I'm working on selling. I've got a photography business that's going really well. I've got, you know, um, a reality show that we're, you know, editing, doing different things to. I've got a lot of opportunity on my plate. I'm a very busy person. I've got a lot of things going on. Um so when I get a, a, a standard letter, it's not really personal. It doesn't seem like it's a, a, an opportunity for any of the characters. Forget just Aisha, but any of the, the in my opinion, the, the Mighty Morphe, the Zeos, the Turbos, whoever, all of these people to really shine and give the audience a moment of nostalgia other than seeing our faces. You guys see our faces at conventions. You see our faces on YouTube. You see our faces all the time, like, Facebook and Twitter have made it possible for you guys to really get in touch with us. So when I realized it wasn't really a, an opportunity to make these characters shine again, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know about this. So that was just my initial thought. So I was like, well, let me see what the offer is and let, let's see what happens. So, you know, I was like, yeah, here's my info. Here's my agent. You know, let us know what you're talking about. I'm open. I'm open to. I'm open to the opportunity. That was what I said in my email. I said I'm open to it. I'm, I'm available um, that week. You know, because they gave us a set of days. And so it was like, okay. So without, you know, before I go any further, there are people who were gung ho. They didn't have the reservations I had, and I think that's great. I think it depends on where you are in your life and. What, you know, what you, you know, I think it's when it arrived in your in your moment, in your time, in your space. I think it's great. Um, there are people who are going to do this reunion show, and I'm so happy for them. I've been in touch with them. We've talked. And I'm like, take a lot of pictures. Tell me how it goes, you know. Um, so I'm not going to say who's confirmed and who's not confirmed and blah, 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 because that's not my position to expose the big secret. I know everyone who's going to be on there, but I don't even want to go there. So needless to say, we get an offer, and basically, without getting numbers, without throwing some numbers around, um, they basically wanted us to fly and leave, um, leave our situation for, what was it, five days, and the kicker was they only wanted to really pay us for two. <laughs> and the amount that they wanted to pay us for the two days, in my opinion, this may not be anybody else's opinion, um, no, it's was not enough. Was not enough for me to leave because I would lose money, point blank, period, whatever. And I've been reading emails um, 
there is a I don't want to say his name. I'm not going to put anybody on blast, but you know who you are. Um, this person said, you know, this was 20 years ago. Um, I don't think that factors in that much. Uh, hold on, let me see what he said. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They've been there've been so many people that are so mad and so angry, and and so like you know, I feel oh, like. Cool. So hostile, yeah, it was shocking. Like, I, it was shocking to me is it's like, you're so hostile. He says, um, let me find where it is. Um, I'm looking for some as well. Like, I see people yeah. that are mad. Oh, well, the thing is, is everyone's like, you should do it for the fans. Forget the money. This should be bigger. You know, you should do it. All of you should do it for the fans. The least you can do is do it for the fans. I do a lot of things for the fans. I actually do this radio show for the fans, and a lot of the fans call in all the time, and we could be talking about cancer, and they call in and say, hey, you know, what's your favorite episode of Power Rangers? And I'm not like, dude, we're talking about cancer. We go, oh, well, you know, my favorite episode was blah, 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 Um, but what do you think about cancer? (laughs) You know, like, it's like we could be on a serious topic, and we go right into it. Um, and, And to me... You know, this one person said, no ranger shouldn't return over money issues. It's like one episode that they're bringing people back, right? Maybe two episodes. Screw the money. I think they should be able to do one episode for the fans. You know what I mean? This is the thing, guys. I wish I was in a position to say screw the money. But when you make a certain amount of money and you have a certain amount of bills and you want to live a certain lifestyle, you can't say screw the money. And the reality is, is the person that's throwing this party, throwing this reunion, this franchise is worth how much, Jeffrey? You always love to throw the number. Um, Saban has $3.4 billion. 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 And what this is, is you guys really have to look at the situation. They have all new toys coming out. They're celebrating the 20 years. They're going down memory lane. They're going to roll out all these new toys. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't make another billion from them. Mm-hmm. And if I'm on the reunion show, if Jason Frank's on there, if Ke- if anybody makes it to this reunion show, David, whoever, Johnny, Nakia, anybody goes on this reunion show, you guys are going to watch it. And you're going to go buy the toys. And you're going to go and it's going to re-energize this feeling inside of you of nostalgia and I'm very happy that you're going to have this moment. But for me, I'm not trying to help someone make another billion dollars, and you can't even pay me for my time to help you make that. It's disrespectful. It's just wrong. I wouldn't advise. So many agents in L.A. won't even work with Saban because of the fact that he cheats, his, he cheats everyone. The only person making money is him, and that's fine. He can make his money. I've moved. It's, it's, it's what it is. But I don't have to go back down that road. Like, I don't have to go back there. And, and it's like for the fans, I'd rather meet you in Houston, Atlanta, New Orleans, uh, Rhode Island. I'd rather meet you guys there. I'd rather meet you face-to-face. You know, I'd rather there be a different reunion where you actually see us talking, interacting, seeing each other. I'd rather that moment happen. So I can't, you know, I can't just sit back and be quiet anymore. And, you know, there's this whole big thing, like TMZ came up with the story of, you know, David not doing the show, and people are, like, bashing David, and, oh, he should put his feelings aside. So what? The producers treated him like crap and called him, uh, you know, a faggot. Like, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. TMZ yeah. picked this up? TMZ put out a story. And it basically says, um, go, go, screw yourself. And this is the thing. I've talked to David. And I don't even know whether David's doing it or not doing it, but he considered it. And I don't even know that that was ever in his train of thought. So for you guys to bash him, if he decides he doesn't want to do it because those those same producers who are still there treated him like crap, then that's his prerogative. That is his prerogative. Well, and here's the thing, which I think all these people forget. I mean, He's I, such a nice guy. 
Talk I'm not to sure that guy. this was a great experience for all of you. Like, it, it really right. wasn't. Like, most of you left under conditions because you weren't being paid what you were supposed to pay. They fired the first three actors, and your three guys came in to replace them because they weren't paying them. So they fired mm-hmm. them when they asked for right. more money. They fired them. But I will them. say, the only thing that I will say that they did was – David did tweet that he wasn't going to do it, but he did it because everyone is speculating. Everyone had their hopes up, and he was like, probably, I don't know what he was thinking, but he basically probably wanted to do what I did, which was just kind of let people know, look, guys, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to do it. He didn't say why. He didn't say if, but it's like they just grab a story. Trust me, TMZ, when the whole story broke that he decided to come out the closet, they were calling all of us and trying to get stories, trying to twist our words, trying to do something. And I thought it was so despicable and so horrible. And I was like, wow, this show does that? It really does that? you got to understand, they're going to take any little inch and take, and make it into a yard. So all of you who are bashing him and saying mean things about him, you know what? you really got to back off because he's a great guy. And the things yeah. that his character, Billy, brought to the, to the series, brought to the show, the fact that he's doing conventions, he doesn't have to do conventions. He's a successful producer. He makes just as much money, if not ten times more, producing the show. So the fact that he's doing conventions is only because of the fans. It's only because he has a special place in his heart for the people who watch the show, you know? Right. And, and so, at the Morphicon, like, he donated all of that money. Like, yes. he didn't keep it. Like, he donated it to charity. He did it strictly for the fans. And I, right. I just, it blows my mind. And not everybody is on the – not everybody's bashing. I would say it's, it's a small percentage. It's a very, very small percentage who are saying I mean things. That. It agitates yeah. the shit out of me because they're so rude. Yeah, that's so what they like, presented to us, guys. It was a cameo. It wasn't – it basically would all be extras because the show is not about our characters anymore. The show they, – they, the way they put it is the show is about the new cast, and we don't want to disrupt the cast. But I feel like if you're going to give the fans a, a reunion, give them a real reunion. Give them right. a real reunion. Don't give them a battle fight scene of a bunch of costumed stuntmen who are going to run around because all it was was a cameo and potentially us, you know, this is how it's presented to me, whether it changes, whether it becomes something different by the time it gets to the gets to the um, television screen. But it's not what you – it's not a two-, three-parter you know, let's save the world for old time's sake kind of thing. This one guy, I love his comments because he was on one. Um, he says, even if David, he, had tough times, in the past he should just man up and deal with it and be in this special. I don't think he realizes how many fans he has that are wanting him to return because I'm sure a lot of them have been wanting him to return for a lot of years now. I'm sorry, dude, but if you've never been discriminated against, if you've never been bullied. treated like bullied, treated like you're nothing, um, talked about, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm coming to the defense of my friend. Um, it's not a matter of manning up. He manned up by saying, no, thank you. <laughs> and then a lot of people were like, you know, oh, he declined the invitation because he wasn't, it wasn't personalized. Um, I, I will agree with David, with David in, in the tweet that he put out. The, it did have typos in the letter. The, it was very impersonal. And you want to say, oh, well, that's no reason to not go and do. That's not the only reason, guys. It's quite a number of reasons. And they're, the same producers are still there. It's still the same. One of the same. One of the couple of the main producers are still producing the show. It's just, it's just bad history. And if you have bad history. If you have a bad situation, then you know what? It's almost like you got to approach it in a, in a good, positive way. It could have been a great, positive thing. And this is the thing. This is how I feel. I'm not. I'm just speculating on how anyone else feels. Um, but what I will tell you is this, also, and I, I, I'm just going to leave this with you guys. I know for a fact, for a hardcore, straight up, I'm not putting anything extra on this fact that um, quite a few people. Um, actually got invited, got the letter I got, were excited, emailed back, uh, yes, I'm on board, I want to go, I'm all set, send me the contract. Um, and they um, basically got 
you know, week went by, nothing. Another week went by, nothing. Another week went by, nothing. And then they finally got a letter or something. I don't know. I, I think it was a, an email. And go, you know what? Because of budget reasons, we, we can't use you. So they were invited <laughs> and then uninvited. Even some of them had talked to them in the process, and it was like, yay, we're glad you're coming. And then it came back, oh, you know what? Sorry, we handpicked 10, 10 people, and you weren't one of them. Because of budget reasons, you can't go. So yet again, the bonds and their folks and whoever else is the powers that be are, you know, they handpicked people, and you weren't one of the handpickies. So sorry, we're going to take, we can't, you know, sorry to get your hopes up, which to me I think is so wrong on so many levels. I think it's so wrong because what I would have done if I were in that position, you have an idea of who you want. Go after the ones that you want. And if those are the people you want and if they accept, great. If they don't, then go to another one. Then go to another one. You got like 60 people. Like why invite 60 people to a party when you're only really going to have 10 people there? Right. That makes no sense. That's so wrong on so many levels. You know, uh, it's just wrong. You know, and, and, and I just, so this is the thing. I really do appreciate everyone who has taken their own personal feelings out of it and they're like, you know what, maybe the situation wasn't the right situation. Maybe we'll get a, re, you know, a reunion show at some point. Maybe these guys have good reason to not go. And you know what? That's fine. We'll meet them. Maybe sometime there'll be something else that comes up. I don't know. But today, right now, guys, it's just not right. It's, and, 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 and no one should be talked about for deciding not to do it. You know? So Bond decided they fired a lot of cast members through the years, and they decided they didn't want to work with us. So why is it any different when we decide we don't want to work with them? You know? Mm-hmm. You brought up a good point. I didn't even think about that, you know? Right. I didn't even think about the fact that a lot of people got fired from the show. Right. Exactly. Like, they treated everybody so rotted. And, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't even have to know you to know this, because if these people were fans as much as they say they were, you know, like, I was around then, like, I was a kid, like, I read the rag mags and, like, read all the reports and saw the, uh, you know, interviews, and I've heard stuff. Like, are you kidding? Like, you guys were all treated like shit. People were fired because they asked for a raise, because of what they should be getting paid. Not, you know, the peasley amount they were. Like, Amy Jo talked about it in one of the interviews, uh, what she said, like, she was getting paid. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, even today's standards, it's, like, it's money. So it's it's just insulting all the way around. And to have these guys attack all of you, like, it's very offensive to me now knowing most of you know, your your castmates or whatever that, you know, I've got to meet through you and doing the show. And they are all such sweet people, such sweet people and such lovely people. And the fact that you all go to conventions the way you do to go meet these people, it just, you know, I think that's sweet. You're flying around the damn country, and you don't need to do that. Like, I, don't, I think that's what they don't get. It's like you don't need right. to do that. None of you do. Right. Right. Like, so that's you giving it back. And I don't understand. Like, you'd rather see somebody on the screen for two seconds or would you rather meet them in person? Right. And the thing is, is I'm glad that that, that they're they're doing somewhat of a reunion and I'm glad those people got to go back and I'm glad it's going to be a good situation. It's probably going to be a lovely trip. And But I don't think it, the rest of us should catch flack for not being able to do it. I don't I honestly, think that. Wish everybody said no. And I'm sure I'll get the hate mail now, but I wish everybody said no. I don't. I don't wish everybody said no. I'm glad. I, I don't wish that. I don't. I honestly I do. glad that there's something being done for the 20th anniversary. I just wish it would have been something, something more. Because personally, if it would have been an episode and it would have been all these characters and it would have been written, you know, I don't know. But what was presented to me, it was quick. It was one, you know, one one or two days, and it's just like we didn't even have to. I think it was going to be shot from the shoulders up. Like it was just our our head. It was just like 
I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be, but from what I understood, it's not going to be that intricate or that deep. Um, I probably would have tried to figure something out if it were a little deeper situation because, you know, I always felt Aisha never had no resolved storyline. Like, you know, it was just like, bye, you know, here comes the next girl. She looks, she looks kind of like you, so let's, you know, it was like, and then I felt when, like Makia never got, you know, her character never got the attention it deserved. It, it, it was just wrong on so many levels. So I don't know. But I'm happy. I'm happy you guys are excited. I love the fact that you guys are really anticipating what's going to happen. You're really trying to figure it out. I hope that between now and when they shoot it, um, that they really make it a special moment for you. Um, and I just hope it's great. I mean, I just, I really do. I'm very excited mm. for you guys, but I'm not excited about the ugly side that this all brought on because I really thought, you know, like, I was just, and I'm not saying it's all the fans, but that, you know, it's always like, you know, ten people. It's like the bad bunch always kind of mess it up for everybody else because while you read that horrible comment, there's like eight other comments that come in from other fans that are like, how dare you, you know, if they, you know, who who really, um, you know, really, 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 um, appreciate the show. So and I'm see, very excited. I, maybe if I would have listened to David more when he was on and he schooled me and said I need to think happy thoughts uh, <laughs> and not be so negative, I wouldn't get so angry when somebody kind of offends you guys <laughs> and tell them they're a moron. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, that, yeah just, I mean, cause really, I, I just had to, like, I, I, what happened was I was on Facebook last night and I just had to personally kind of just set the – I feel like, oh, I need to personally set the record straight. And it's not going to happen in a tweet, in a Facebook post. People always kind of misconstrue. It's like a it's like a text message. You don't really get the true feeling behind what someone writes in there, you know. And I don't want people to think that I'm angry or that I'm mad. I'm not. I'm like, I'm in such a great place in my life. And I'm so happy that you guys are going to get this moment. But it's just not something that was anything – I felt disrespected by the whole situation. So for me, I don't want to be in that place. I've never been in that place. I've never wanted to be in a place where I don't feel the work that I do or the things that I bring are not appreciated. If if you're not in a situation where you feel appreciated, then you need to go to another situation. That's why I originally left the show. When I went to the premiere of my the movie, and it was my first movie, and it was this one, the, one of the biggest moments in my life. Like, if you can ever, I don't, I don't know if you'll ever get this moment, but if you could ever imagine walking out of a limo, there's a red carpet, and it's all for you in the movie that you're in, and you're there with your castmates, and you just spent six months in Australia dying, wanting to finish, and it seemed like it was never going to end, and you spent all these hours, and you were so like, oh, my God, oh, my gosh. It's so hard to make a movie. So to finally show up and the movie is done and it's finished and you're just like, wow, this is the best moment ever. And you step out of your limo and you see, guess who you see? You see Han Saban. Oh, my God. Han Saban, the man who hired you, the guy who brought this whole thing to life. And you go, hi, hi, how are you? And he has that blank stare on his face and he has no idea who you are. <laughs> I want you guys to think of that moment. How would you feel? Because that happened to me. And I was like, you know me, Karen, I, Karen. And he was like, mm-hmm. like giving me the fake kind of smile, like who the hell is this bitch looking around crazy? And then I go, Karen, I play Aisha. And he goes, oh, Karen. <laughs> yeah, unreal. that happened unreal. to me. That happened to me. And at that moment, I knew. Because this is the thing, guys. I sat there and go, there ain't that many black girls in this movie. I think I'm the only one. <laughs> and they surely don't have braids all the way down to their butt. I'm pretty recognizable, even if I don't want to be. <laughs> even, well, if I'm think... not, even if I'm not a Power Ranger that you care about, you still a black girl with braids. Everybody, I'm like, you know, it's like almost you can't miss me. You can't miss me. <laughs> Well, out of all the shows he had on at that time, I think you were the only black cast member, period. Right. And then I'm like getting out of a 
limo? Like, who comes to a limo just randomly? <laughs> like, you only ride a limo when you're going to a premiere, you're going to a fancy party, or you're going to the prom. I wasn't going to my prom. So <laughs> I'm all dolled up. I'm, you know, people are taking pictures, and I'm walking up to you going, hi, and you don't know who I am. Like, come on, dude. So at that moment, I knew that it wasn't about us. It was about the toys, and it was about – because they always used to say it's just about the toys. It's not about you actors. You actors can be replaced. Like, that's what they would tell us on the set. Because guess what? When I got hired, three other people had been replaced. So it was always they instilled the, they instilled, instilled the fear of Saban in you and said, uh, you can always be replaced. Don't you, don't you get too comfortable. Don't ask for no raise because you will be replaced. People have been replaced before you. So – Trust me, it was one of those situations where I was like, wow, you can always be replaced. You really can. Wow. Okay. So. Oh, crazy. So crazy. But you know what? Let's stop talking about this. Anywho, I'm very happy. I'm very happy for you guys. And I really think it's going to be, it's going to be a great moment no matter what. No matter what. It's still going to be a great moment, and I'm I'm excited for you guys. I'm very well, excited, but, and I, I I my my heart goes out to the people who really wanted to go because there were some really great rangers who really wanted to go to this, and I don't know why they wouldn't figure it out. Like figure out your budget, dude, because this person said yes, and this person's gonna add so much to this reunion. Like the reunion would have been not that it's not going to be off the chain, but it could be so much more off the chain if they would just loosen up the the wallet a little bit. Not even a little bit, just. Give them what you offered them and keep the pushing, you know? I don't know. Crazy. It's all crazy to me. It's all crazy. Well, it's and, all and, crazy. and it's basically, again, like another metaphor is minimum <laughs> wage. I guess it's not really a metaphor. But it'd be like somebody going for, to back to their job and not getting minimum wage. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't understand why kids can't get this through their head. Oh, my it's God. Just, Go on TMZ right now. It says Black Power Ranger boycotting reunion in support of Blue Buddy. <laughs> in support of Blue Buddy. Wait, I, yeah, Walter and David are close. I don't even know if this is true, but it's hilarious. Oh, I thought they were talking about you. <laughs> no, it says Black Ranger. I wasn't Black Ranger. Oh, I just I thought you meant like Black Girl. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I'm racist now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, they couldn't have gotten better pictures? Yeah. So, yeah, so it's funny. But you know what? Hey, on to the next thing. <laughs> Oh, man, I love it. I love Why it. does it, like, Life not say so you? Like, it just it talks about it's the original just, just cast? The original. Yeah, it's just the original. Like, you and know, it's why the original. Does it say, I love the original. It says Green Ranger and Jason David Frank. Red Ranger, maybe. Austin St. John went on to be EMT firefighter. Uh, Pink Ranger, maybe. Amy Jo Johnson, still working actress. Blue, out. Black, out. Yellow, out. Tui Trang. Wait, how do you say her name? Tui Trang. Tweet train died in car accident in 2001. Like, they're assholes. They're not nice. Like, the way they write their stories are not nice. Like, I was just reading over the headlines, and it's, like, so mean. Like, TMZ can really be mean. I actually watch the show because they make it funny on TV, but if you just read the headlines, Rob Kardashian, I'm not a big loser yet. <laughs> Wade Robson says he'll never forget. He never forgot, but denied specifics of trial. He denied specifics at the trial. Let's see what else. You know, it's just like crazy. It's like mean headlines. Kanye West <laughs> rants about paparazzi. I'm not a celebrity. It's just <laughs> sad, though. Like, <laughs> I, I I don't know. Like, I love TMZ. I used to watch the show, too. So it's just kind of like, oh, like, I'm just, oh. Uh. Yeah. Like, it's weird when you know kind of semi-weird in that it's Weird. funny, but until it's you or until it's some like your friend or until it's somebody you love and those mean things are being said or those or or just the the speculation of it all is being said. Like just, I kinda wanna you know, just call like, him to myself. Right. And be like, You're 
wrong. Like, you don't even know. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my oh, God. Lord. Did you, Did beat you hear child? that? What's going on? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> no, I dropped a baby. No, I'm just kidding. I dropped oh. a whole big-ass tub of strawberries all over the place. Oh, no. Quality show Wait, here, kids. Roll, Quality five show. Roll. Pull them up. Pull them up. Pull them up. Five-second roll. Five-second roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, Quality you show know, here. I, I think it's just it, it, it's just hurtful. And it, it, but you know what's great about it? I know, of course, I know David well. And I know he is not even giving one. Like, he's not even caring what anybody says because he knows how great of a person he is. He's been such a great friend to me. And... Well, there was years we hadn't we hadn't seen each other just because you know life happens and things happen and you know it's just crazy and now that we've reconnected he's such a great friend like I can text him and he always has something wonderful to say to me same thing for Cat me and Cat are such great friends she's always like hi my lovely Beyonce and you know she's so awesome just yesterday Jason Frank texted me. And was just like being silly on my phone, and is such a sweet guy, and you know, uh, I mean, all of them. Like me and Johnny are still great friends. Me and Steve are still great friends. It's just, oh, Steve. you know, one thing. Yeah, one thing I'll say about the show is it's brought me the best of friends. I I had an email. Me and Narvi were emailing each other this week. He's such an amazing person. So for me, I I mean, it's so like. I have such fond memories of being with them, you know? I don't know. It's so great. It's but, just, yeah, it's, it's, nuts. it's funny. Mm-hmm. TMZ, gotta love it. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love the fact that but they haven't picked up on you being like, I'm not going back because they cheat. <laughs> they said that about me? No. Like that's the only thing that they heard was that I said they, they were they are cheap. No. Everybody knows they're cheap. That's not I'm telling you, that's going to be the quote because somebody's going to leak oh, this, I'm sure, to them. And they're going to be pulling clips from this and like, oh, Karen Ashley says the bond is cheap. Co-host says $3.4 million and calls fan moron. Like, that's going to be the headline. I did not call anybody a moron. That's I did. not right. Oh, okay, yeah, it wasn't me. I didn't call nobody. I didn't call. I don't care. I, I like the fact that you guys have such strong opinions, and you guys obviously can say whatever you want to say. I don't care. I just well, felt like I needed to say because, something. Again, like, I felt like, like I, I needed to protect us. <laughs> like, it's very frustrating to me getting to know you. Like, well, obviously I know you now. Like, you know, we're, our phones mm-hmm. are attached at the hip because we're bicoastal. Not bisexual, bicoastal. Get it right. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and just getting, like, Catherine is such a sweetheart. And, and they like, they're all so nice. So it's like they just don't deserve this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just kind of sad for me. And I don't like right. when people pick on, you know, people I know-ish weird in that weird semi-whatever way. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just not cool. Yeah. It's not, but such is life. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, we'll all have different – everybody has a journey, and everybody has a, a situation, and every individual you'll face, you know, you'll face a, a, a crossroads in your life where it's like, you know, maybe it's maybe it's at a job and you feel like you should be paid more, or maybe you're at a job and you feel like you 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 deserve the promotion more than someone else, or maybe you're in a relationship with a man, a woman, whoever, and you're like – it's just respect. I deserve respect. I deserve what are you the respect to say? I give you. What? I'm just saying. I'm just trying to kind of everyone comes to the pla this place in their life at some point where they have to take a stand for themselves. And they have to know what they're worth. And they have to go, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. You're not you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna do something that I should be expected to do. I want to do something because I'm appreciated. I want to be able to make the money I should deserve. I want to be treated great. I want it to be a happy situation. Like you take a stand in your life. And whether it be a job, a personal relationship, a family member, whatever, there's going to be a time. And I hope that all of you have the strength to take a stand for yourself because you should. It, you know, you know, I'm a believer in God and you know, there's nothing in the Bible that says you should be a doormat. There's nothing in the Bible that says you should be treated badly or that you should feel horrible about yourself. You should always feel good about yourself, and you should always be able to 
you know, look in the mirror and be happy at the person you've become and be happy with what you're doing. So I say, you know, it's it's a, it, it's just one of those crossroads. And it wasn't that huge of a crossroads for me. I kind of was just like, oh, I don't know. I don't think I can do this. And that was kind of it. If they would have counteroffered um, or said, you know, well, maybe you don't want to do it for this, but if you could do it for this and it, it give a, give us something, I might have considered it. But it wasn't like they, they've yet to even reply. They've yet to reply. So that's how much respect they have for, you know, me. And, and, and they don't even feel the need to even say, uh, no, thanks, no thanks, lady, or even just anything, like no reply, nothing, 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 nothing. And I hope none of you ever get treated that way because it's not very nice. Mm-mm. And it's just huh. wrong. Yeah. Like, you just don't it's treat wrong. a human that way. Especially no. somebody that made you rich. Well, I'm sure he was probably rich before, but made him a billionaire. You know, you just don't do that to people that, like, helped you succeed. Like, why wouldn't you want to take care of these actors that helped you become, you know, part of an elite person of wealth? Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't you take I, You know, it's very hard for me to understand because you know me. Mama gets some money. I'm like, who needs $50? Um so to see somebody with that kind of money to be in the position that he's in, it's just, I, I don't know, I, I just don't even understand it. Right. Uh, really? Anywho. Anyways, uh, it, it, have you seen, I don't even know I'm going to this story of all stories because this story makes me even madder than the whole supposed thing. Oh, God. <laughs> the guy, you know I'm obsessed. I'm so obsessed with the girls who were kidnapped in Ohio. I, I There have been nights I haven't even been able to sleep because I can't stop thinking of them. And I just go, what do you do? Like, what can you do? What can a person do to stop this from happening? Like, I just don't even know how this could have happened or how it happened for 10 years. Like, what do you do, you know? Um and the, the, the pieces of the puzzle that these girls now have to put together, like, to put your life back together after that kind of torment. Like, they said there are reports that there were chains in the basement with dog collars. Like, he had them chained up. And this guy, it came out yesterday that he's actually going to say, he's going to plead not guilty. How do you plead not guilty? Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. And his lawyer had the nerve of going on record and saying that he's not the monster that we all are, that the media is portraying him to be. Like, how are you not the monster? Like, these people were kid, these women were kidnapped, they were held, their families suffered, their families thought they were dead, their families hoped that they were alive. They had, were raped. They, you know, were forced to do things. They couldn't see the sunshine in 10 years. I mean, how are you not a monster? I don't know. I don't know what the definition of a monster is, but that's pretty much my, now my definition. My definition of a monster is that man, uh, that guy's face. You know, it's like, you know, these girls, the one girl had a baby. The other one supposedly had multiple miscarriages because you punched her in the stomach. I mean, come on, dude. How are you not guilty? Yeah, like, you're a monster. Yeah. Like, so bad. So bad. But, like, yeah. Like, and how do you plead not guilty to that? Do you really think anybody in their right mind is not going to convict you? It's not like the person's dead. Like, there's three witnesses. Yeah. Like, I, I don't even, I can't even comprehend it. Like, are you really that right. stupid? Like, you don't have a chance in hell. Like, the only right. thing he's doing is cost enough money. Right. Like, oh, like, why do we have to go to trial for this? We all know, dude, just say guilty and spare everybody, the, spare us the, 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 the details. Because now that there's going to be a trial, all the gruesome details are going to come out. Right, well, it's These almost like making those girls go through torment again. Huh? It's like making them relive the whole thing. So I feel like it's probably his way of, like, getting them one it's more his, time. Yeah, it's like that. Arias girl, like whoever, what's her name? The the girl that got convicted of murder. It's like why put everybody through all this when we all know, like we all know you did it. And then she said she did it, 
But why? Why even say self-defense? Like, why even say that? You know? Well, because they're hoping it'll be Casey Anthony again. God. Oh, oh, well, thank God it wasn't. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I'm so excited to turn this, to get off of that, because I can't always want to talk about that. Um, You know what I can't wait for? What I'm so excited to see this week is Star Trek. I think it opens this week. Oh, I'm really? I'm so excited. Yes! Did you not see the first one? The first one was great. No, I love it. I love it. I just haven't been paying attention to when it's coming out. Do you know if it's coming out in 3D? Because you know that's important to me. Yes, you know it is. Oh, absolutely it is. Um, yeah, it comes out. What's the exact date? It's supposedly this week. Um, I, it's like a, it's like a bu- Like, this summer has been great so far. Because think about it. Think about it. So far, we had, um, you know, uh, we had the Iron Man. Now we have Great Gatsby, which I still haven't seen, so I'm behind a week. We have Star Trek, and then the week after is the Fast and the Furious, which I have tickets to the pre-screening. I'm going to be seeing that on Thursday. Oh, by the way, I can't you. do the show. <laughs> I can't do the live show because I'm going to go to a pre-screening of the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> I hate you. I'm so sorry. I'm so like, I'm so excited. Like so far, the summer movies have been off the chain. I have, like every weekend. It's like a good movie. It's See? a good movie. And this is why I'm better too. Because maybe if a why? certain show paid you, offered you a little more money, you could afford to fly me out to be your show. <laughs> Money, I would have flown you out here to see the best screening of Fast and Furious with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And did I tell you, I get free popcorn. And that's, that's, that's like the best part. <laughs> I hate you. I'm sorry. Yes, I would hate me too. If I were you, I would hate me too. Quoting the remarkable uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Little Kim herself, if I were you, I would hate me too. <laughs> No that was the best rap line in the history of rap lines. Like, she just called all those hating, all them haters. If I was you, I would hate me, too. <laughs> I love Little Kim. Little Kim, where are you? Where are you, Little um, Kim? Nobody I don't can think I recognize her. Because her she, face is so fucked up. Oh, why did she do that? That hurts my feelings. I thought she was looking, I thought she was so cute, like when she did, you know, No Matter What People Say, you know that one song she did, yeah. We Got It Go and all, like she was so pretty, and like she had some plastic surgery, that's fine, if you feel like you need to tweak a little stuff, that's but what, no, what's her, is she, is she, what is she? What do you mean? Like what's her heritage, she's you know? Black. <laughs> like, she's oh, black. Just, well, I don't know if she's like just black or she's Mexican. Maybe, or, I don't know. She's in New York, so you know New York and New Yorkers could be. You well, could be black. You could be I'm, Haitian. You could. I mean, there's so many different. Is there you really? Know, can you think of any other black woman that's had plastic surgery? Because I can't. So this is the other thing Jackson. I can't buy. Oh uh, well, that Jackson. doesn't. They don't count. Um, <laughs> they just don't count. <laughs> don't I, I just. Count I can't even Jackson. get into it. I can't even get into that. The Jacksons. They just don't count as people. I mean, um, more people have plastic surgery than you think. It's just not everybody. I just feel gets like black women are smarter, and, then, and like you age so much better. Like you still could go play a teenager in a movie. Like that's the part that kills me. <laughs> but what's funny is that people, you know, people just age differently, and people just. Um, I think there are people who, when they start getting the little wrinkles and stuff, some people celebrate that. And then some people go, oh, no, I'm going to go get me some, you know, fillers and some, or I'm going to go get some Botox or something. And that's fine. But I think when it gets to the point where you have multiple, multiple surgeries and you then change the look of your face, that's Are where you trying to come to out of the closet and say that you've had some work done? No, I've never had any work done. I put that on everything I love. Are, are those, I put that are on those your real breasts? Yeah, they are, and I hate that. I feel like, like that one was thing I would do. Part. One thing I would do, people ask me all the time because they're so big. I, what I would do is I would, no, seriously, I get the, I don't fake. And I was like, why would I make them this big if they were real? If they, if they were, if I had a choice, it would not be, I would not have a double D. I would not have a double D if I had a choice. I See, would I don't even a, think they look that big. They are double Ds, homeboy. Double Ds. I don't know, maybe. Always, yeah. Sure. I just, Go you know, ahead. I've got I've got my friends that are like double D's. It's like their goal size. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, I got mm-hmm. a few friends that are, like, G's or whatever. You know, like, they've got to custom make them and, like, ship them in from, like, a tenting company. They're bras. Yeah. No, um, they're double D's. Double D's, and it's not it's not right. I think they're nice. It's just not right. You know who they, they had on here? I, 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 you know me. I just Googled black women who have had plastic surgery. <laughs> this is short list, isn't it? No, there's little Kim. There's Mimi Leek, supposedly. There's um, who else? I'm not talking nose jobs. Like little Kim changed her whole face. Like she doesn't even look human. Most women I know have boob jobs. So does that count? No, does I'm not counting that. Count? No, 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 no. Because so, I just okay. So what counts? Nose jobs. I think if you change your nose, that changes your face. Well, okay. Your nose is I mean, in the middle right. of your face. But I mean, like, because did they change it because they had a deviated symptom? They had to get it fixed. So they like, no. you know, a lot of people oh. just didn't like the way their nose was shaped, and they changed it. Okay, but they I mean got the whole. Skinnier. I guess Hang I'm on. more thinking of like she looks like her face has been pulled and just right. I, well, she, I, you know, she had face lifts and eye lifts, a cheek of like there yeah, are like amazing that, things. Like it's like scary. That's what I'm saying. Like I mean, a nose job to me isn't even that serious. Like I almost feel like that's second nature at this point in life. But I just don't know many black women that have had a face lift or their eyes lifted. That you know, serious work because they don't need it. Like it's a little jealousy. Is it? What would you have done? Me? Oh, honey. Um, oh, the I man have... in the window. What would you have done? You're the only one talking to me. <laughs> Girl. Well... <laughs> Shut up, bitch. Um, well, okay. Y'all better get a pen out because it's going to be a list. Okay. First thing I would do is go get my choppers fixed. Okay, and then a little gastric bypass, and then a little tummy tuck, a little liposuction, and then I'd have them install them fake abs in me, uh, and then I'd have my varicose veins the fake moved. What? The fake abs, the- you know, they give you abs in three minutes that you can't get in three years, honey. Oh, the fake abs! I thought you said a fake ass. I was like, you want an ass? Actually, oh, okay. I don't really have an ass. Like it's completely flat. I don't remember when I was skinny. So but, it's not like so, we're doing a whole full body reconstruction on you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You want abs, like, you want an ass. You and I have, you know, like eyeball. above my eyelids, you know, like my eyes sag, like I've got that fat or whatever, you know, that hangs I over your eyelids. you lost weight, that would change. Like your no, face, no, like your because even when I was like when wicked I lost, skinny, no, I it wasn't my family. And my face has, like, I feel like my face is skinny. Like, I've got a skinny face right now. Like, I need to oh. take a million pictures because... My face is skinny. I got skinny I, face. I do love when I have skinny face. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, after you spent so many years being so overweight, like, you have flab. Like, I used, when I was skinny, like, it's kind of gross. But I could, like, pull my neck skin on both sides out. Mm-hmm. And I had wings. Like, it was huge. Like, I could pull it out and shake it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, you know, just XX Like, it was nuts. So it's like, man, I want all that removed. Well, yeah, I mean, but see, that to me is just, you're just trying to make make it, I don't know. Well, I guess people who have plastic surgery, they're all trying to make it better. Like, you just want to make it better, whatever you feel better is. I mean, let me re- let me redo this honestly, though. Honestly, though, like, I probably wouldn't have anything done. Like, I'd get, you know, my teeth and whatever. But I, I probably actually, <laughs> honesty, if I was really being honest and not playing Zane on the radio show, um, I probably wouldn't actually have anything done. <laughs> Just because I think that there's still a, there's such a high risk with a lot of stuff that it's just not safe. Right. They've got a before and after picture of, of um, Kim Kardashian. I didn't. I never thought she had plastic surgery, but it looks like she had her nose done, and it looks like she had her eyes done. Like yeah, like her eyebrows are too perfect. Well, eyebrows you can you can that that's makeup. That's just having a good makeup artist. I think no, but that like, her face doesn't move. I didn't realize, though, like, she's had, like, her nose, and looks like she may have had something done to her cheeks and maybe an eye lift. Like, she's had some, and she's too young. Why would you do that? She's so young. Well, there's like, like that. What's that one crazy white girl there? Who? Oh, she was on that VH1 show or MTV or and something. And for those of you who are new listeners, Jeffrey's white, so he's, he can say, oh, who's that crazy white girl? <laughs> <laughs> I think 
some people, I don't know if they don't know who you are. You sound like a black woman, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, well, I am. You can call me Watusi Jenkins. Thank you. <laughs> he dreams of being a black woman. Thinking, you you should have been Medea. You sure you should. I'm telling you, that son of a bitch owes me money. He stole my <laughs> shit. Because He's everybody, I cannot tell you, when Diaries of a Mad Black Woman came out, I probably didn't see it for a year after it came out on DVD. So many mm-hmm. people came up to me because they saw my stage show, um, mm-hmm. you know, at the bar, and they were like, oh, my God, we saw you in a movie. And, it, like, after, like, the first, you know, fucking ten times somebody says that to you, you're like, oh, let me guess, Diaries of a Mad Black Woman. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I watched it, and I'm like, this motherfucker owes me residuals. <laughs> he stole my show. He really maybe he did. was in one of those. Maybe he was one of, in one of those uh, Aub- or the Syracuse gay nightclubs. <laughs> maybe because I'm like that bitch is wearing moo mm-hmm. moos too. I'm like this is bullshit. Like he's got my shit. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he? I know. Some it's people, son of a though, bitch. Like, some of these before and after pictures on Google, they needed a little something, something. Like I can see why they <laughs> did what they did because no, but I'm just saying. They maybe they wanted a more streamlined face, and with the whatever they had done, it gave them that. And they don't look bad. They actually look great. Like you know, I don't, I don't, I, I just think when you when you manipulated your face to look like what made me mad. I used to love Michael Jackson. You know me. I love Michael. I don't yeah. care what they say about him. I love crazy him. white lady. Yeah, but when he, exactly, when he turned from a black man to a white lady, there is something wrong. That is now mutilation to me. Right. I just go, mm-hmm. oh, my God, oh, my God, is he is he white? Well, is on he, that, that but crazy white lady. But his face is different. Like, he was good looking and before. That, like, he yes. was a good looking man. And then he was an ugly white lady. I'm sorry. Right. Well, because, see, I understood mm-hmm. When he was, like, younger, he had a wider nose, and maybe he didn't like that. Maybe that's not the the face you wanted to have. So then he got himself, like, around the thriller time. He looked great. He had slimmed his nose down. He had, you know, he looked like a handsome dude. And then all of a sudden, his skin was white, and his nose his nose was, like, even God. skinnier. Like, it wasn't even normal. It was just, like, the one bone. Like, how do you, Girl. how is that attractive, the one bone? He, if you look, I mean, he really does look like the cartoon of Peter Pan. Like, you can't deny the resemblance of his face and the fact that he has Neverland Ranch. I mean, like, let's just be honest. Like, I think the dude went fucking, he was supposed to go right, and he took a hard left. Like, he, he just went batshit crazy. Was, yeah. That's like, all at I at the know. time, it was probably the only thing he could really control in his life. Right. Oh, you know what it is? It's the end of the show, Jeff. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah.